What is good, everybody? My name is The Generation 71. Thank you for tuning back into this random commentary. It's not that random, obviously. Um, it, as you can tell from the title, it's 2016 in a glance. A lot of people do these at the end of the year. Usually it's around, you know, New Year's, but I figured why not do it today because I actually didn't do a Christmas video this year. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Hopefully, you guys are spending time with your family but still have time to watch this video. So, yeah, I also make these videos because I know if you're a lot like me, you don't necessarily have a, you know, a lot of friends or family to spend time with so it's like hey you know internet people band together all that good stuff so uh but yeah the reason i'm making this video today is it's actually going to be showing two different gameplays this is post commentary by the way so just deal with it um we're going to be showing some call of duty black ops 3 zombies and we're going to be showing some overwatch gameplay and there's a reason for that uh 2016 as far as like gaming career goes that's essentially what my gaming career has been i mean don't get me wrong recently i've been actually getting into resident evil quite a bit i actually recorded a video on resident evil but decided not to put it up because it was just uh, a video to make a video i wasn't necessarily proud of it but mostly i've been playing uh black ops 3 and then overwatch <laughs> and even uh midway through it was mainly just Overwatch because with Black Ops 3, especially at the end of the DLC season, and then afterwards just not really enjoying the Easter egg hunts anymore. A lot of things had changed as far as my feelings go towards Black Ops 3 Zombies. Not to say it's not a good game mode. They've actually progressed like so much over the years, but it just wasn't... It's not the same product that originally brought me in, so it's no longer for me at that point. I'll still play it occasionally just to feel some nostalgia, but I really wish, as far as the PlayStation goes, they would make you know games backwards compatible so I could play like the original Black Ops or Black Ops 2 Zombies. That would be nice, so. but I digress. But yeah, Black Ops 3 was essentially the beginning of the year, then Overwatch came out in May, and honestly, that has kind of been my my go-to game, the game I've been playing. Um, of course, it is a first-person shooter, but it's a strategic or, I guess, team-based shooter. You guys probably already know it's one game of the year after all, so most people probably already know the extent of what that game is about. But what really got to me was the fact that, again, what brought, brought me in for the Call of Duty Zombies portion is the story that was hidden in plain sight. You know, when it comes to character interact interactions before the map started uh when it came to you know seeing little easter eggs hidden in the map when it came to like the comics that you would have to read off the website of uh, uh playoverwatch.com there was a story and it's super immersive but you have to go look for it um again i made it um i believe i uploaded it i'm not entirely sure but i did make a video talking about how there's a reason why overwatch won game of the year versus uncharted 4 because with the fans that get into overwatch you have either the casuals or the extremes there's kind of no in between unfortunately so with the extreme people obviously you start seeing all the story you get really into it and you're going to be like to the point like yeah i need to vote for game of the year so you just had a lot more avid fans of overwatch than you did for uncharted 4 i'm not saying that overwatch is a better game than uncharted 4 i mean obviously uncharted 4 had a playable single player campaign but i mean my personal opinion i would choose to play overwatch over uncharted 4 but i mean that's just me i know everybody else has all a different opinion um but that's what really brought me into playing overwatch and what really made me stay with it and why i still continue to play and i technically bought it on two different systems i, I use air quotes i know you can't see that but air quotes <laughs> um obviously originally bought it for the ps4 but have it for the P pc i just don't play on the pc as much one, my graphics card sucks, so it doesn't look as pretty. Uh, two, I just can't get used to keyboard and mouse. I just can't. It just is not going to happen. So, But that's essentially kind of like where my gaming career has gone. But that also kind of has influenced my quote-unquote YouTube career. Now this is where we get to the nitty-gritty stuff. So with the YouTube career, of course, you know, beginning of 2016 was uh, doing the Easter egg hunts and all that. But it was just so saturated and... You know, after a while, and I've had this conversation with multiple different people before who used to do it, but <coughs> essentially if you were a part of the Easter egg group and you were one of the more popular groups, you'd actually have access, not well not access, but you'd get introduced to the map way before anybody else because you would actually be brought over to track so they could advertise them. Which makes sense from an advertising standpoint. I mean, obviously you want to promote your DLCs, you want to make more money, you want people to buy it. So it makes sense from a business business standpoint, but then when it came to like the actual Easter egg hunts, it just it just wasn't fair anymore because even though you didn't necessarily get steps to the Easter egg, you got some map layouts. And sometimes that map layout just gives you that extra second that you need uh, to uh, 
actually a solved Easter egg. A great example of that was the Origins Easter egg uh, for Black Ops 2. We were technically the first live to solve it ever. My group, um, that group, you know, doesn't, they're not together anymore. <laughs> but we were technically still second in the world. I can't remember if they were, they had actually been introduced to the map, like I actually went out and had some pre previous gameplay recorded. But it's just, that's a great example of showing that if, if they did do that and, you know, they did get that extra time with the map, that little time just learning the map that we had to do that they already had, all of a sudden could have been a game changer. So after a while, just seeing how, uh, and again, that's what it is, commercialized the uh, Easter egg hunt had become, I just, I no longer found it fun. Not to mention the puzzles in Black Ops 3 suck. They were, they were honestly a lot like Advanced Warfare Zombies, if you guys are, again, like old school zombie fans that still watch me for some odd reason. They just were so much like Advanced Warfare. There was no real critical thinking or rational thoughts. Just shoot here and something will happen. Yay. <laughs> so... Uh, but that's what originally got me out of it, and then uh, a lot. I did used to play a lot of multiplayer, but I mean, just with these extra jumps, I'm just not quick enough anymore. You know, I've killed too many brain cells in my head. Uh, but the, a big thing with that too is I don't have a full six-man group to play with anymore, which I used to back in the day. So, so a lot of those was kind of like the perfect storm that just got me out of it, and which got me into you know playing more Overwatch. And I did try doing some Overwatch videos, and it's not to say I'm gonna stop anytime soon. But I don't expect those Overwatch videos to do well at all. <laughs> um, there's one that did well, and well, I use it as a uh, asterisk because it actually hit, uh, I think at this point, hit like 3,000 views. I'll double check while I'm talking. But last time I checked, it hit around 3,000 views. Uh, but the likes, they're like, it likes and dislikes right there, like they're 50 50. It was actually a trolling video by Symmetra. And so obviously it's trolling, but yet there's so many people that get super offended. And a lot of it also has to do with just the Overwatch community. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could say that was toxic to the point that, yeah, I was actually trolling my teammates. I wasn't actually playing a team-based game. But it's not like I was also doing it in a competitive. I was just doing it in quick play. I've seen people do worse things in quick play. I remember one time on Eichenwald, um, when you got into the actual castle, if you go on to the right flank, uh, there's like that Dark Souls Easter egg with the knife in the campfire. And I remember there was like like three people literally on my team just sitting in there just like praising it. And I was like, okay, well, we're supposed to be playing a game here. But, you know, I guess, you know, if we want to praise this, we're good. Yeah, as of uh, recording this video, it's at like 3,000 like views. So, so views, yeah, it's great. Trolling, that's great. But as far as retention of actually keep, keeping people watching my videos, not so much. And then not to mention, too... The content you make brings in a certain type of audience, so like if I continue to do trolling videos, <coughs> tends to bring a lot more toxic viewers because obviously they find that hilarious, like ha 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 ho, that or you get the people that just hate it and just think you should be crucified for it, so they decide to be like, oh hey, well, you know, shame on you, I'm going to dislike every one of your videos. So the content you make brings in the type of audience that you have, essentially. And when you look at Overwatch, you have a couple of different things as far as what should be sellable or commercial. Commercial is not a word, but commercialized. Uh, you have the you know funny moments video, so it's like a lot of those. Uh, I know somebody made a joke about it, but it's a lot of those just sitting in a lobby. You're not good at the game at all, so literally you just have funny banter and you do bright yellow, purple, green text um, for the jokes and all that. Um, then you have, you know, the pro players actually showing amazing gameplay, gameplay that no matter how much you play in your lifetime, you will never get. <laughs> um, and then you have the news. I know a lot of people were saying, it's like, yeah, all you have to do is just wake up, check Reddit, the Overwatch Reddit, see if there's news, if not, go back to bed, wake up, you know, two hours later, do that again. Um, and then you just have discussion videos. That's all it is. So as far as what Overwatch is there um, has to offer, it's not... I guess the best way to describe it, it's already oversaturated, and it makes sense when you have it, a game, that one game of the year that's so popular, that's made by Blizzard, it's just super oversaturated with content. So even though, yes, I will continue to do Overwatch videos, I don't expect them to do well, because what do I do? I play mediocrely. Well, not mediocrely. I mean, I like to think that with my practice of first-person shooters, that I range at least above average, let's say above average, you know, not advanced, but above average. <coughs> but... 
Um, and then I just talk. I talk about random shit, you know. Uh, I forget the last one I did, honestly. Again, I'm, oh, I was talking about the game of the year. The game of the year, like why Overwatch won game of the year. Hashtag not my game of the year, man. Um, but it's just, they're just discussion videos just with Overwatch stuff in the background. So overall, compared to, you know, funny moments, I'd love to do funny moments, but especially with the restrictions, and this has been a problem since the PlayStation 4 came out, but with the restrictions of actually being able to record your voice and uh, live uh, group chat or party chat or whatever, uh, takes funny moments out of the equation without buying five different cables and the grades of quality. And this is this whole thing, you know, but... Um, so a lot of it just having to think of it like a different approach of what content do I want to make and then how do I want to make it. And I've been uh, searching, I've been watching a lot of YouTube, and I mean a lot. <laughs> I got to the weird side of YouTube the other day uh, to kind of give you an example. I watched a video, what was it? It was, oh, it was a Smash Mouth All-Star, but as time goes on, the pitch of the singing went up and then the actual like instrumental pitch went down so it just sounded really distorted at the end yeah that's the weird side of youtube don't don't go over there it's scary i almost didn't come back alive um but no i've watched a lot of youtube i've been watching a lot of different youtube videos on especially on overwatch to see exactly what people consider as good content <coughs> and there was one concept that i liked but it has you also have to think about sustainability so there's one that i like a lot his he's kind of big 50,000 subscribers but he's not that active but because of the type of videos that he makes uh, he makes these montage weird videos uh, so my favorite one was like uh, about Zarya talking about how she's Russian and then just all the editing he puts into that it makes sense why he can't pump out a video every single day <coughs> so those videos are something that I'd be interested in making as well. I mean, not copycat, of course, but just putting my own twist on it because that's what it is. Nothing is original anymore. You just take a concept and you just make it your own at that point. Um, but that is technically not feasible because of all the editing you have to put into and then just how much time and effort it takes. <laughs> and that's just a whole other concept. We can kind of, I'm going to go on a tangent here. What I've learned throughout this whole year is just the concept of time. Time is essential and you're always going to sacrifice something and in the end i mean it sucks but the sooner you learn that the more okay you'll be so the fact that um at the beginning of the year I <coughs> excuse me as you can tell i'm still trying to get over a cough but as um I forgot what i was talking about at the beginning of the year i was actually working full time you know 40 hours a week yada 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 um, but what kind of added to that is I was actually working not in my local town. I was actually going to a different town. So it was about an hour drive there, an hour drive back. So an eight-hour shift would technically take 11 hours out of my day. So then all of a sudden, out of that 11 hours, I still have to make time to, you know, do random stuff like clean my room, you know, laundry, like miscellaneous stuff around that. And then still make time for my quote-unquote loved ones and all that. You know, I actually being there actually having a social life if there was a social life but eventually you just notice that there's just something you have to sacrifice you either sacrifice you know your health by not actually making food by getting like fast food uh you sacrifice your uh, cleanliness by not cleaning right away necessarily <clears throat> uh you sacrifice your social life because you know um as much as you want to say, hey, yeah, let's be social, maybe there's other things that are more important, or in my case, and it's what happened and it's what I've been trying to find a balance with, is you sacrifice, you know, your hobbies, which, you know, was YouTube and all that, so. And then, that's why a lot of people you see is like, yeah, I want to make this my full-time job. Well, yeah, it'd be nice that <laughs> if I could get paid, let's go with the, you know, um, modest amount. It's, let's just say it's more than I make now, but it's less than what I could be making, <laughs> so. Um, so let's say if I can get paid $14 an hour uh, by doing YouTube a day, I mean, that'd be perfect. So all of a sudden, put eight hours a day into YouTube, th technically that's my job, and it's my hobby. And then all of a sudden, bam, I have the rest of the time to do, you know, social life, yada, 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 I can balance it out. But unfortunately, just when you have so many things on the table, something eventually has to get sacrificed. And, you know, as much as we wish the saying I, I i think it was from the matrix the saying i love the most it was like it's like how can you ever have time if you never take time so or something of that variation so which is so true you have to take time to have time make time to have time something like that so um but i digress so a lot of it as far as going back into the youtube is just actually 
kind of going back into this new al- algorithm of actually, you know, watch time and being able to upload daily and making sure it's like um, clickable content. Because like right now, I guarantee you, like with us being at 20 minutes, this is not clickable content. There's more of my hardcore fans for some reason that are still here and like, hey, yeah, he talked for 20 minutes. I want to see what he has to talk about. Thank you for making it this far. You deserve a cookie. So. But um, clickable content has to be something, you know, that people want to watch. And it also takes consistency. And then for a while there, too, <coughs> my consistency was super duper off. And a lot of it, a lot of why I made that second channel had to do with kind of going with a different concept that I liked a lot. And I still want to keep going with it. But it's also, again, the feasibility of actually getting that off the ground, actually being able to do it daily and actually putting it all the editing for me to be proud of takes a while. And with YouTube, I mean, it's not necessarily a wild, wild west, but it's still not necessarily a established society and structured and all that. You know, it's really hard to find a place uh, to, you know, look for editors because if I were working full time and I could hire an editor, that would be great. I would be more than happy to pay an editor to do some of the stuff that I need to do on that other channel. But just finding one that's reliable and that doesn't just be like, oh, hey, yeah, I, I couldn't do this. Can I still get paid? You know, stupid stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. But I don't know. But I guess to keep this under 20 minutes, I can't believe I talked for this long. Again, if you made it this far, you're amazing. Um, that's my 2016 in the glance. A lot has changed this year. This was a sucky year. This it was just, you were stupid. A lot of people agreed to. So, um, but I'm hoping 2017 will be better. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be happening. It's not like I'll ever disappear from YouTube unless I die. So, I mean, if I died, you, or if I stop uploading just in general, you know I died. So, um, but as far as what I'm planning on doing or what's going to be happening is still kind of up in the air. Uh, I really hope. I can figure something out. We'll see what happens. I don't know. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, I think I'll get it there for now. Again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for, you know, you're my fan from you know beginning of this channel, and then even more if you came back from the old channel. Like, there's not a lot of people that are still here from the old channel. So, um, but yeah, I love you all, guys. Again, have a merry Christmas. Hope you guys are spending time with your family, and then you just randomly listen to this for like 17 minutes while you're in the bathroom. I don't know. <laughs> so, but this has been the Generation 71. We'll catch you guys later.